Hi. I'm Sasha. How Augusto. are you? Good. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come in, please. Okay. So tell me what's going on with the dog. Oh, it's a lot of things. You know, I paid a lot of money to buy him, and he has incredible genetics, but um, I also hired a private nanny for him, but he doesn't want to do anything for me. He always go away from me, and this is crazy. And I've got a private nanny to pick up him, and I spent so many time trying to teach him something, but he's always ignoring me, and you know, I do a lot of a lot of things for him. How long about how long have you had him? Uh, like one year. Okay. And what are some of the things that you guys do together then? For what type of activities are you doing with him? Oh, uh, for example, I could even buy an ice cream in McDonald's ice cream? for him. Yeah, mm. ice cream, and also like um, I did a lot of things. I feel like I did enough but he's always just walk away from me. Have you done any professional training before? Uh, no, never. But mm. I hope it will help because I have no idea what I can do else for him. Okay. You know, it's... Also, I hired a person who walk with him and um, he get grooming every week. Hmm. And I don't know what else I can do for him because it's disappointed for me, you know, because I spent so many time and I never get something back from from him. And so, what does he normally do? What 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 is he doing that is like? What is bothering you? What kind of what is what are your concerns? He very often just run away from me. Um, I want him to behave and um, I want him just respect me and love me and give me some love. Uh, but he's ignoring me, barks a lot, and um, I don't know how cl to control him, how to teach him to be just a nice dog for me, because I feel like I deserve it, mm -hmm. you know? And um, have you done any, any professional training before? No, never. No, okay. All right, well, let's go meet the dog. Okay. Is he outside? Uh, yeah. Be nervous. So oh, walk oh, him okay, this way. Okay, 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 baby, go. Okay, okay, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes he can do something, but it's so you know, it's nothing because. Uh -huh. Is he always like nervous like this? Oh yeah, unfortunately. Oh my God. Does he know sit down? Nothing. Mm, I'm I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. He he never hear me. Okay. Have you tried? Like, have you tried uh, anything on your own? I don't yeah, understand. I tried to teach him very simple things, like ask him to sit down or to come to me, but he never uh, hear me. He okay. Did you like watch any videos or how how are you trying to get him to listen to you? Yeah, I I watched some videos on YouTube um, and tried to to fix it, but it never helps. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, let's sit over here and then uh, let me see how he responds to me. Yeah. Because he seems to be pulling you around. Oh my God. Okay. Do you want me to uh, hold on to him? Baby, yes. I have heels. Come, come, come here. Good boy. Okay, he's pretty stressed out right now, so maybe let me hold on to him and see uh -huh. what could be going on. Um, come here. Okay. Good boy. Yeah, I mean, he seems to be a little bit on the timid side, you know, which is, a lot of dogs are. Uh, but he is trying to engage, so we have to figure out what is causing him to be like this. Uh, was he always more on the, on the shy side when you first got him, or did anything happen? No, I don't think that anything happened. He was always shy and yeah, and he, he just uh, walked away all the time. Okay, so I know like a lot of the things that you mentioned that you do for him um, in order to try to build a relationship with him, but a lot of those things really won't you know, achieve what you're trying to achieve with him. If you're trying to get him to be more interested in working with you and uh, doing things with you, like just ice cream and having someone else walk him, because you said you don't really have time to walk him. 
So those things won't really make the dog, you know, really want to do anything with you. They might enjoy that for the time being, but it, it doesn't really work that way for you to build a relationship with the dog. So we have to focus on some activities that you can actually do with him on a daily basis that would help the dog want to work with you and, and build that relationship that you're trying to build with him. Um, but then we'll also have to talk about like his anxiety, you know, the whining, things like that. This is a dog that is anxious, he's really confused. That means he doesn't really know what is expected from him. Uh, he's all over the place, you know. I mean, and a lot of times some dogs can have issues, but a lot of times it's just like the lack of uh, leadership. So the owners have to be able to be telling the dogs what is expected from them, setting the rules. Uh, so you teach them what is right and what is wrong. And a lot, a lot of times when you're not communicating with, the, with them clearly, then the dog becomes confused. And that's what I see with him. He seems to, have, to be a really good dog, but he's confused. He's anxious. Um, and a lot of this has to do with like not understanding the dog and fulfilling all their needs. Um, and again, the activities that he can do with the dog to build a relationship with them, the types of collars that we use, like the one that he has on right now is pretty loose on him and it's a harness and the harnesses are designed to enable the dog. So you don't really have a, a good way to communicate with him. And so that's why he's pulling you around and he's like pacing on the, all over the place. But we have a lot of things to address. Um, and I'm trying to figure out right now, like where to start. You know, first I want to, I think give you a really good understanding of what you should be doing with him. And then we're going to go into like different tools that he can use to help you achieve those, those things. Uh, yeah, I need you to help me because it's pretty embarrassing. I can go with him on public, uh, like he, uh, he needs to behave because people laugh at us. They look at us and laugh at us. It's, it's crazy. I don't like it. Because of the, like, because he's anxious? Uh, yes. Yes, because his behavior and because how he act with me. How does he act with you? Um, ignoring me, never, never listen to me. Mm. Like, when was the last time you took him like anywhere, like for a walk? Um, maybe when I just got him, as I said, you, yeah, I'm very busy. I have no time to walk with him. With the slip lead, we want to position this closely behind the ears. This is the best way to communicate with the dog. Uh, like I was saying, with the harness, they don't really have you know, much control to communicate with them. And then also, have you ever used any other collars or any treats to try to work with him? Did you hear me? Hello? Did you ever use any other types of treats or... Have you ever used any other collars or treats to work with him? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I'm so busy. Um, um, I have my delivery late, so I, I got distracted. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, uh, but... I, I was just asking if you have ever used any other types of, like, training collars or any treats to work with him, to try to train uh, him? No treats, because I tried to give him some, uh, but he, he really didn't like it. Okay. Uh, what about any other types of collars that he have used before? I know, I only have this one he has on. Okay, got it. Okay, so I have this uh, here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be seeing how he responds to it before we take off the harness. Some dogs can be a little scared if they never had something around the neck before. Come, that's pretty good, good boy. I want to condition him to respond to just very little leash pressure, just like that. Yes, come, come. Very good. He seems really eager to follow directions. So he's a really confused dog. Um, I don't see anything else wrong with him. I think the, the fact that he's confused is what's making him scared. Uh, when dogs don't know how to behave in different situations, they become anxious because they are just, you know, it's unknown to them. So the more training and understanding of what is expected from them that they have, the, the, the better they become. Can we hurry this up? I actually don't have a much time for this can you just fix him well so the thing with training is that it's going to be very important that you participate in the training because i'm not going to be here when i leave you know you're the one responsible for following up with the training so if you don't know uh what to do he's not going to get better you know you're going to have to um, I mean, this, this is a very easy dog. There's nothing wrong with him, but we need to, again, give him the proper understanding of what we expect from him. But it's not going to take much. I promise you that if you like, just, you know, do a couple little things differently, it's going to really make a big difference. So, 
He's actually responding really quickly for a dog that never had anything else on besides the harness. Look at that. Sit. Oh, he knows sit. Come. Sit. Ready? Sit. He just needs a little bit of practice, you know. So he knows it because he did it the first time, but clearly he's confused because he, do he doesn't have enough practice. So if you become consistent with giving him the obedience training, he's going to get a lot better very fast. Very good. Okay. And then he is responding really good with a slip lead, which I have to show you in a little bit how to practice with this because it's very important that the owners know how to use the tools properly. Excuse me. Hello, Sasha. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm so, so, I'm this, so this sorry. Is, I got distracted. But this is walk. extremely important. I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to get the results that you're hoping for, it's extremely important that the owners are participating in the training. It does. I would be totally wasting my time if I just say everything that you need to do, but you're not listening to what you need to do. I mean. Like I said, the dog is already doing better just me handling him here because I'm communicating with him, I'm engaging with him. We can see how he gets anxious when he gets confused. When he doesn't know how to handle things, he already starting to whine again. Uh, so I know for a fact that if the owners don't participate in the training, they're not going to get the results that they were looking to get. And I took my time to come here and show you to help the dog because you let us know how you know he's anxious and you're struggling with that. And it's very important that you pay attention. Yeah, I just, uh, I didn't expect it takes too much time, um, this training. We have been training for 30 minutes. I mean, you have had the dog for one year, you want the behavior to change, but for you to get the results, you, you just have to put a little bit of effort. It's, it, you know, it's not really that much. If you spend 30 minutes a day with him, it's going to make a big difference. 30 minutes for, out, of, out of the entire day. So, like I said, I have owners all over the world that, want, that would do anything for me to come and help them with their dogs and I took my time to come here and help you and your dog and clearly he needs it, he's anxious and he needs you to step up. You know, it's not him. All this here is just confusion. He's not doing anything wrong. Come. Good boy. Dexter. Ready again? Sit. Yes. Look, he even knows how to give a high five. Good boy. He's a very smart dog. He just really needs you to pay a little bit of more attention to him. Like I said, all the things that you said you think you're doing for him is not really meaning anything to him. You know, it's not really building a relationship with him. Can you uh, participate a little bit more? Because I have, I'm going to have to have you practice holding the leash and just so that I see how you're doing. Um, because I, I do want you to start using the slip lead from now on to communicate with him. And then also the ball because he doesn't like treats, but he can use toys as something to motivate him to work with you. And then I'm gonna teach you how to reinforce the sit and the down and recall all the things that you wanna do with him and how to be able to start walking him with the proper leash. Okay, maybe let's move on in the living room where we have a little bit more space and I'll have you practice with him a little bit. Okay, I'll try. Let's go over here in the living room so we have a little bit more space to work with him. Good boy. Good boy. Dexter, come. Oh, good. Sit. Good. So he is listening pretty good. Like I was saying, with the slip lead, uh, the way that it communicates with the dog is when it tightens, it gets the dog's attention. So you have to be really careful to not ap apply too much pressure because unlike the harness, when you apply pressure on the harness, it just confuses the dog. See how they lean against it? Because it, it doesn't deliver any communication. With the slip lead, when they feel that little pressure, because it's from the head, look at, look at that. It's amazing how you can use that to guide the dog. So you're leading the way. But we as the, as the leader, as the handler, have to be very proactive with understanding like what is it that we want from the dog. Right? So we're not just randomly applying pressure. So for example, I want him to come this way. I need to like know that and then I'm going to come here and apply a little bit of pressure. Then we're going to uh, reinforce the verbal command. So for example, let's say I call him to me, like you want him to come to you, you said. So we're going to go here, Dexter come, and he already responded. So he's already responding really good. Usually when the dogs know that we can get their attention, they become very responsive. So here, Dexter come. Good boy. Sit. Very good. So I'm going to teach you how to do this in just a second and have you practice. But again, I'm practicing with him to make sure that he gets really good at this. He's already more engaging right now. Dexter, come. Psh, sit. That's really good. So he does have a lot of training already. Maybe you have been 
doing some obedience with him that you don't even realize that he picked up. You just have to know how to communicate with him. A lot of times when you're talking to a dog in a way that they don't understand, they will act like they're ignoring you, but in reality, he might know the commands, but the way you're giving the commands to him is what makes all the difference. So right now, because I have the right tools on him, I have something to motivate him, the body language is right, they have to be more like, you know, show that they're interested in, work, interested in working with the dog, that's gonna make the dog more interested in working with you. So that's how you build engagement. So here, Dexter, come. Dexter, come. Yes, good boy. Dexter, come. And I am going to repeat the commands over and over again as long as he's listening because that's how he's going to memorize what, is, what it is that it means you know, to, to be able to associate the behavior with the verbal command. Good boy. All right, so it's your turn to practice a little bit. You have to be hands-on um, because that's how you know that you're getting it right and then I'm here to help you if you need any assistance. Okay, so you're gonna hold on to both of the leashes um, position yourself next to him, like facing that way. Okay, now just walk him around a little bit and do what I was showing you with the leash. Maybe go towards the table a little. Okay, so remember a little bit more body language. So make sure that you're actually communicating with him. Okay, hold on, that's too much pressure. So one thing that you have to do is that you have to be careful with the amount of pressure. When you, when you took the leash, you just kind of, you know, randomly had tension on the leash and you're walking whatever direction, you need to know where you're going. That's what I mean about being proactive. You kind of uh, determine what, you, what is it that you want with the dog before you even go for the walk. I want him to come with me this way. I'm going to bring him with me. See, come. Yes, sit. Good job, look at that. He listens really good as long as you are doing it right, you know? So, make sure you go slowly, bring him with you, call him to you. So here, don't wrap the leash on your hand like that. Just hold on here, and then walk that way with him and call him with you. Dexter, Dexter. But hold on, lower your, relax, your, relax your posture, okay, and then walk that way. But call him. Dexter. All right, bring him back this way. Okay, um, again, a little bit more, Put, I call this like putting energy into it, like almost like you're using body language to communicate with the dog, okay? So try walking that way a little bit and then trying to go this way. Okay. And relax your arm. Okay, bring him back. Come back this way. Um. Okay, so you have to pay really close attention to the leash pressure. That's the most important thing right here. Let me show you again. Hold on. So, uh, if you don't do the leash pressure the right way, it's gonna create even more confusion. So right now, when you're walking him, it's just very random. So he doesn't really have anything to guide him, to give him instructions, to give him um, a little bit of sense of direction. And it's creating all the confusion that you see with him. So you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to him, using body language and energy. And then the leash pressure is very minimal. It's, it's basically to reinforce and, and help get the dog's attention to be able to deliver the message that you're trying to deliver to him. But really the message comes with the body language and your energy coming like this. Good. Come. Psst. Dexter, sit. Good job. He does really good as long as we're giving him directions the right way. Okay. We have really needed to pay attention. So um, I feel like right now I'm wasting my time. Because if I'm giving you all this information and you don't listen, nothing that I'm telling you is going to make any difference. I have honestly never felt like this disrespected in a training. I mean, I'm being serious. I, I travel everywhere. I have clients that would do anything to have this opportunity to, to get good information. And I feel like right now I'm giving really good information that could really help your dog. And he needs it, but you're not paying attention. So I, I'm actually quite confused. You know, we have been dealing with this for a year, and I come here, and we're not even an hour into the training, and the entire time, you're not paying attention. You're not listening. You're, I'm showing you over and over again, and I really feel like so I... So now it's my fault that my dog is bad? Well, it's not that it's your fault, because you're trying to get the help, but if, I don't think you have a, the understanding that you have to participate. You have to be hands-on. You have to understand what is it that you need to do. You have to understand what his, his needs are. And I'm giving you that information, but you are being disrespectful. You're being disrespectful on your phone the whole time and not practicing what I'm showing you. And again, I feel like you're wasting money and I'm wasting my time. Okay, 
So I'm gonna have you try one more time just to make sure that you can practice a little bit, at least in the house, until I come back for the next session. Sasha? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I have no time. Can you just straight? Well, here? honestly, no. If you have no time, I feel like at this point, I have literally wasted my time. There's other dogs that I could have helped. This is not even a joke. This is, I feel very disrespected that I just wasted my time coming well, I'm here. I'm not a dog I, trainer. Well, I know, that, but that's why I'm here, and you literally yeah, have right. wasted my time. I have never been disrespected me. like this. I, have, I train all over the world, and I have never had an experience like this, so I'm out. I don't know why you're laughing. Like, this is serious. I, you, we never dealt with this before, but I'm not going to put up with it. Like... I'm done.